and follow uh, Mexico. As well. I'm gonna go follow him. <laughs> <laughs> Find out where it is, and that can be we live? And we're live, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are still talking. Welcome to the Mexican Soccer Show. Monday Night Football. We're going to have that hashtag. Monday Night Football, if you're watching us, getting ready to start with these guys. Here we go. El Rey, once again, we'll keep, we'll keep uh, using this song just because, you know, at least, at least a month we'll keep doing it. But welcome <laughs> to another edition of the Mexican Soccer Show. Yes, llorar y llorar. There's the video. I'm We So Farm Food Mex Source. This is an hour long podcast dedicated to all things Mexican football. Today we have a lot to talk about. The mini L3 U17s in Chile. Way to go. Making a splash in the world again. But let's say hi to everyone. Mr. Naib Oran now in Mexico City. Mr. Naib, U17. What do you think? Yeah, and great stuff from the U17. Uh, first of all, uh, buenas noches, Tom, uh, Wisto, Johnny, Cesar, and also to the audience that are watching us. It, it was a, a great weekend. I mean, when you look at it from that perspective, from the U17, I, I mean, it's it's a reality. You know, I remember um, talking with Espericueta a couple of a months ago, or basically a year ago, and Espericueta told me that El Tri's youth teams are a powerhouse internationally. Well, after the win against Germany, I think that's... That's evident, you know, that uh, uh, U-17s, uh, Mexico's U-17s are, are a powerhouse. Wish we could see a little bit of more of that in the U-20s, but uh, we'll, mm -hmm. see, we'll see in the next year. in the next years. We'll see in the next year. Mr. Tom Marshall in Guadalajara, which, uh, to mention, the storm, Patricia, mm -hmm. not, uh, not as bad, thank God, everybody's okay. How are you, sir? Yeah, I've survived the hurricane, which is uh, main, the main thing. Uh, over the weekend, uh, yeah, it wasn't as it wasn't even as bad as the rainy season. And I I, I was there like with the we had to go to the Oxford to get like the the old candles in and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> I was like, stock, of course, stocking up on food. We had to go and get the mother-in-law as well because she was on her own. So we had to go and get her all come around the house. So it was uh, it was pretty well, funny. We're glad you're okay. I think a lot of Mexicans say hey, this wasn't that great, a, you know, a horrible storm. Well, I, thank God it wasn't a, a horrible storm. And uh, yeah. better be prepared and sorry. Mr. Johnny Rico, Liga MX is back no more. El Tri, I know you like that for sure. But no, all of us is, is in, not in very good. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we're, back to, <laughs> yeah. we're back to Liga MX talk, and all of a sudden Johnny Rico's back. Johnny Rico's back. <laughs> yeah, you know, with, 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 with a Camp Patricia, it was. It was a shocking surprise, a good surprise, to see the good organization in Mexico. That, that, that's a good good job on with the Mexican authorities there, getting everyone to safety and. You know. Well, maybe, maybe social media. I mean, I think it played a big part. I think everybody was aware. So, good, good for that. Cesar Hernandez. Yeah. Cesar Football also in California. Europeos, Vela scoring two goals. I know you were definitely liking that, and Chicharito scoring also over the weekend. Yeah, both of them scoring. Uh, going back to storm really quickly, I feel like we should have had a storm over here. Like any of that rain that you really had <laughs> down there, Tom, just feel free to just bring it up here. You know, we, we really need as much of that as we can. Uh, but yeah, no, uh, it was definitely a good weekend for some of the other fails. So it was good to see uh, Vela score. But I, I don't know, I'll, I'll probably bring this up later, but kind of had a problem with him. Like, uh, I feel like he should have been more excited. He like scored his first goal this season. He just kind of like walked off as if uh, that's just something he has regularly done this season. And it was it was really really strange. And even after the second goal, just kind of same, kind of like ambivalent, kind of like yeah, whatever. Yeah, I do this every now and then. But uh, he's, he's counting down the days till he joins Columbus Crew. The Columbus Crew. <laughs> that's right, because he's only gonna be he's only gonna be two hours away from watching LeBron every weekend. So yeah, yeah, that's LeBron. I think he liked the Heat. I don't think he liked LeBron. I think well, Miami doesn't have a team, so not yet. Well, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was like, wait, Miami Heat. <laughs> um, well, good, good to see everybody. You know, we're back uh, full house. I know uh, some of you were traveling, and we're back. I know Jason uh, is also going to join us on one of these episodes, but uh, saying hi to him. But we should have uh, a fun time. Want to say quickly to thanks a lot to Mr. Afro Zander on Twitter. Definitely follow him. <laughs> He's doing our. Uh, our awesome tweet by tweet every minute, play by play of what's happening in the Mexican soccer show. If you're listening to us on the podcast, hello to you. 
Uh, ask us questions, uh, tag us on the YouTube comments, and we'll do our best to answer them on the show. And then if not, if you're listening to us through, uh, through iTunes, definitely uh, give us a tweet uh, during the week. We'll try to answer another as many questions as we can on the next following show. I know some of you guys watch it uh, uh, during the week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Thursday. If you're watching, it, if you're listening to us in the car right now, thank you. I know a lot of you do that on the way to work. So lots and lots of visitor. Uh, 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 listeners and lots of people always interacting with us. Definitely appreciate it. But let's go ahead and get started. As you see, those of you that are watching on the video monitors on your computers, you have a little, uh, nice little, uh, it's got our names on the bottom. I think it, we're getting slowly, we're being a little legit. Oh, know, come legit. on. We, 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 look, we look classy, we look professional. But we didn't need to mention it. We just. I think we did. I think it, it's a step I up. Think, I think it takes away from from the classiness to mention. You know what? Speaking of classiness, let's just get this out of the way. Jo Johnny, show your 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 uh, your amazing shirt that you tweeted right away, and because I know people have questions. There they are. I mean, there it is. <laughs> there they are. But now we have to now we have to explain why he's wearing. Johnny, <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> Go a coward to naive, uh, Johnny. Obviously, tell a little. It actually, it's actually football related. So go ahead, go ahead and yeah, you got one minute on the timer. It's actually pretty simple. It's one of those October Save the Boob campaigns. And you were it was given to one uh, uh, a whole team, right? In Cholos. Yeah, yeah, I got it at work today. It was given to the entire Club Tijuana Cholos Sprinkler squad. So it's it's for a good cause. There he is. Do you guys right, ever so think that maybe you should have a Save the Sholos campaign instead? <laughs> oh, <laughs> See? Oh, no. <laughs> Those are fighting words, my friend. That's right. <laughs> oh, go ahead. Um, I didn't want you to be the only one with, with some kind of pink campaign, so I, uh, I got these uh, glasses at a, at a festival here in Phoenix. It was, it was kind of cool, so I'm just going to wear them. Yeah. No, I, th I think the League of MX does a really good job, to be honest, you know, with the uh, raising awareness for breast cancer and stuff. I mean, you know... It, with the balls and like you know, there's ball girls at games as well this month as well, uh, you know. So you know, I think they do a, an exceptional, exceptional job in that regard. The kids, especially with, uh, specifically with Puma, uh, Querétaro, Santos, Atlas, uh, they have their their kids basically with pink um, on them, basically. Yeah, and it's cool to see like before the games too, just to, you know, them talking about it beforehand. So no problems with that. But yeah, it's a it's definitely a good thing to see. I didn't, we're going to be talking about, I didn't realize it would be our first topic that we are going to be talking about. <laughs> I, th I thought we were going to talk about the under-17s or something, but not a breast mm -hmm. cancer awareness. Well, that look, let's go right into it. Let's talk about, uh, first of all, um, Juan Carlos Osorio is in, is in, Europe, uh, in Europe, obviously, where we, we hear that he's going around and talking to everybody. Just really quickly, um, spending a long time there, and we, we kind of touched on it last uh, last week on, you know, obviously his tour, he was with Chicharito and Memo and just kind of going around to see that. So what are your thoughts? Um, him spending out, him and Banyas are also going. I mean, just kind of news out there, right? Ochoa back to the national team. <laughs> Johnny, go ahead. Ochoa back to the national team. <laughs> so you keep hearing big news uh, that Ochoa came out with an article that's saying, you know, the, that he's seen him, that there's confidence in there, that he's a really good keeper. Uh, bringing Ochoa back, which as much as uh, I think we have enough keepers and I know that the, there's an ongoing debate with Johnny, but at this, um, but <laughs> not like we missed out on on Ochoa on a great keeper because I think we have him, right? I mean, I, I guess the difficult thing is just like I mean, we know he's talented, we know what he can do, but and, and I I definitely think he's making the most talented keeper, but I mean, he just hasn't been playing minutes, and whether no matter how talented he is, like there are always those worries. I mean, he's not even going to be playing a Copa del Rey. Like game until December, so if he does put faith in him next month, this could potentially be his first minutes in God knows how long. So I mean, it's 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 it's, it's tough. Maybe I, I'm not entirely sure if I'd feel that confident having him start next month in the World Cup qualifying matches on the 13th and the 17th of November. I guess that's just one of the many keepers that we do have. So just want to throw that, that that story on what what. What's next and what's due back? The list is ready to come out. We talked about it. Should be coming out in the next week or two. Already, we should have the Europeos. I mean, uh, the list for the Europeos. So get ready for the next couple of days, maybe three, or maybe in the next week. Uh, list being leaked out because of the clubs already getting that 23 days to 30 day notice that we need those Europeos 
uh, in, a, you know, in the qualifier. So it'd be interesting to see what Europeos, does he call them all? I think the usual, Tecatito, Chicharito, Guardado, Carlos Vela, uh, Raul Jimenez, you know, I think will be there, but maybe not. Maybe uh, it'd be really, really uh, surprising if there is someone that's missing, you know, a la Tuca for, for Nap. And let's see if Memo Choi does come which it kind of looks like from what he said in an interview might there be there. So um, we'll go ahead and move on unless anybody has any more, any other, any other thoughts on Osorio and his three in uh, Hero in Europe. No, I'm, I'm just quick with the trip. I think um, uh, I, one thought that came up is just I think it's important for the players to understand his idea right away, and I think this trip, you know, which came all of a sudden, I, th I thought he was actually going to go to Brazil to handle, you know, family issues right after the Querétaro-Toluca game, but instead he, he got the plane to Europe right away, um, you know, and that says a lot about him, you know, I think it's important to have the Europe Europeos on the same page as the coach because they can be key. I mean, I think they were really important during the Piojo era and, of course, during the brief Tuca era and, um, and, and should be important with Osorio as well. Definitely good. Yeah. You know, his work yeah, ethic, he's always talked about his worth ethic, which is really good. You know, uh, he's, he comes in in his work, and you saw that as soon as he said, um, "I'm not in," you know, in, in Brazil, he was already at a couple games and studying and ready to go. So, Cesar, you were about to say. Yeah, I was just say really quickly. It looks like he'll still be out there until uh, Thursday. I think uh, the last game and last player he's gonna meet up with is uh, Rafa Marquez. He's be watching because I know Syria is gonna be having a match. Uh, they're gonna have a bunch of matches on uh, on Wednesday, and he'll be watching Hellas Verona and uh, a Verona squad who has yet to win a match this season, so uh, it'll be interesting to see if uh, what he gets from uh, Rafa Marquez's performance, you know, uh, Rafa Marquez who t took part in a defense and allowed four goals last weekend, so, so yeah, we'll see, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Well, all right, well, let's go ahead and move on. We only have an hour. Last week, we kind of went a little bit over, so we're going to keep tight schedule. The producers are telling me to keep it wrapping up. I mean, they're... They gave us they gave us these nice little names on the bottom. That's kind of a because we've been doing good. But here we go. So uh, U17s. Let's talk about it. Mexico uh, did not lose in the in the state in the first stages of the World Cup in Chile. Uh, Argentina 2-0. Um, uh, I'm sorry, Australia. They were able to tie. And then uh, Alemania against Germany against the world power. Uh, you know another you know great great performance with with Mexico and winning and on top of the group and now goes against. Nevertheless, the it looks like we're always playing the host in some kind of World Cups. I don't know how it feels about that South Africa, Brazil. It feels like we're always trying to play the host, but we're playing the host in Chile, which I think as much as people have been saying that they haven't had that great of games, that there's not that strong squad. When you're playing the host at home, uh, it's really hard. So, uh, Naive, I know you do an excellent job, ta uh, you know, keeping up with the youngsters, watching all the games. So I'm gonna throw to you. Uh, what should we be watching, especially some of you, some of the viewers that don't know those youngsters that are there? Give us, you know, three names, two names where, you know, the, that we should be looking at. You know, your Fierros two years ago, you know, the Vela and, and, John, and Gio Dos Santos, uh, Moreno, you know, in 2005. Do we have those two, three players that you see making that first jump? And what are we uh, expecting against Chile? I think we do see them. I mean, I think uh, Lopez, who scored the goal, was... I think has been the key in the team, you know, and, and he was in the, uh, Tom did the, the ranking with the guardian of the players and Lopez was there in that list. You know, there's a uh, left back, uh, right back, if I'm not mistaken, from America, uh, Torres as well, no? U Ulises and then, uh, Torres. Ulises Torres. And then I, what's solid, what I, I think the, the special thing about this team compared to the 2011 one is its defense, you know, with a goal, goalkeeper that is... Uh, mm -hmm. Quite remarkable. Amazing uh, saves. Yeah, I've seen that. Amazing saves. It's been back and forth. And it, I mean, uh, it, and it's not overhyping. It's the character that he shows with the stops. I think the game against Australia, for example, you know, El Tri could have lost that game, and that would have put a, li a little bit of trouble to the whole deal. But it was uh, Romero who who pulled it off uh, in that game. Um, and and you know, I think defensively speaking, uh, Esquivel is uh, the captain. Esquivel. He, he actually plays for Mineros, the Zacatecas, in second division, and has had a lot of minutes this season um, and has been a key player. And right now, Mineros, the Zacatecas, mm -hmm. is missing him. You know, it's, it's a, 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 a leader-type player, and that's what I see a little bit, a, a strong midfield and a, a strong defense. 
the problem that I still keep seeing on this team is the forwards, the, the lack of uh, having of a striker. And that might be problematic in the knockout, uh, knockout stages. Yeah. You know, I think a lot of the questions that we see is uh, especially overhyping a team. Uh, we've had success in the U17 2005 and obviously in the last U17s and uh, in Mexico winning. And, and we're looking already, you know, giving them that pressure, which I think it's good to have to give to the to a teams and youngsters. It gets them ready for the next stage. I but, don't. but Tom, and I'll go with you right now, and jo Johnny, on, on on that pressure. But Tom, I want to ask you, especially, you know, we're looking at this talent, and a lot of people ask, oh yes, you know, Mexico is beaten. We have a great system, and it doesn't mean anything. And we we're not going to see that, you know, transfer over to the to the to the you know to the to the senior side. But why is this good? I mean, I know that uh, that well, we're looking at it, but it's it's a step forward in the youth system. And kind of explain to people that even though we might not see it right away, it's you know it's a step forward at least in the federation of winning a World Cup in the 17 level. Well, yeah, I mean, no, I don't think winning the World Cup or anything really matters. I mean, I think what Mexico showed so far in this group stage is that there's another generation. You know, mm -hmm. and, and, and we know, and when you put that together with the other generations going back to 2005 and, uh, you know, Vela and Giovanni, who, who will still be around in a few years, I mean, you're going to have so many successful generations fighting for places. And it's that competition for places that, that really should fuel the national team and, and make it, in the end, better. I mean, that's the, that's the goal. Um, so, yeah, I've been very impressed. Um, I think more than anything, rather than, you know, picking out an individual, I mean, <laughs> I mean, now you mentioned Pablo Lopez, he, he's the obvious standout, but it's the team as well. I mean, what I loved about that game was they were 2-0 up against Germany, and then two, and then, and then they went down to 2-1. Um, but they kept going forward, and they showed absolutely no fear. It wasn't they like, oh, we're in Germany, yeah. and they froze. No, they kept pushing players ahead of the ball. And that, I thought Germany kind of looked a bit like, what's going on here? I mean, you know, we, we're the... You know the, the, this unbelievably successful national team at all levels, and then all of a sudden we've got this Mexico team. We're supposed to be put, piling pressure on them, and they keep throwing players forward and giving our defense trouble. So I just think mentally that's the difference as well with this yeah. these generations of Mexican players. They're so different. They're so much more worldly than going back even 20 years. I mean, these kids that we're seeing now at the under-17s, they've already traveled around the world. I mean, they already know what it is to go through customs, to, you know, go to China and Europe and, and all these different places. So, you know, it's very positive. Um, at the risk of rambling a little bit, I think that there's a lot of people that I see on my Twitter as well that say, who cares about the under-17s? You know, it's not going to translate into success at the, at the first team level. And, and it is a valid concern. But I think from, from, from my point of view, when you look at it, I think what you see is, and my concern as well, is that right now in the Liga MX, there aren't enough youngsters getting minutes. And um, I did a little study over the weekend, and actually th there was only 30 Mexicans under the age of 25 years old who started games last weekend, which is about 15%. And I mean, 25 is and under shouldn't be, it's not very young either. It's not like saying 21 and under. And I think if you've got only 30 players starting games, that's not enough. I think I think if 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 you want to look at a kind of blockage in the system, it is that it's the you know the there is. You think that's compared yeah. to the other to the other leagues, Tom? Yeah, uh, yes, yes, and no. I mean, if you look at the Premier League, obviously England's got a similar problem with that. But mm -hmm. if you look at Argentina or Brazil, then mm -hmm. their kids get games. You know what I mean? Look at the Chilean league; their kids get games. Um, if you know if they're good but, enough. So. But they're, those leagues are export leagues. They don't have the money to buy good True. talent to bring to their leagues. Yeah, that's so true. It's not, it's not fair to compare the Mexican league mm. to the Argentine league. Not necessarily no, it's, it's not comparing the league, it's, it's just comparing the, just the yeah. overall situation. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. All I'm saying is that's the situation. Mm. And for me, you don't have enough opportunities because you're right, Mexicans don't go abroad either. So they're not getting opportunities there. I mean, the, there's rare examples, but it's not very, there aren't many young Mexicans abroad under the age of 25. In fact, I think there's only like three who were getting regular minutes who were under 25 years old. So I don't know. I think there's a bit of a blockage there in the system, and I don't know what the, if the league can do anything or, you know, going back to the, what was it, Regla 20 Once or something like that, or, you know, other ways around it. For me, I'd strengthen the second division and, and maybe make that only one or two foreigners um, per team. But 
and and really really make that stronger so that the youngsters. But anyway, it's uh, it's a, it's a big issue, I think. No, it's a, it's a, it's a great conversation because a lot of people, how are we going to go forward and how we're doing it? And I know that the FMF has spent a lot of time. Uh, these kids go into in a lot of money. These kids go into these tournaments, sub 15, sub 17 tournaments all around the world, like you said, Tom. And I think this is why they've had the experience. There's not that many uh, federations that that do what we do and it's those bigger it's those bigger teams like France, Germany, uh, I know Spain had a great youth generation look at what they did but the England's um, the you know Brazil even that uh, most of their youngsters are in clubs and it's really really hard for clubs to you know release players for it uh, whenever they you know if, if they are uh, great players that are coming in in the young age and I think that's why Mexico kinda just uh, just like you said Tom there's not that many youngsters playing in and first division, that it doesn't matter. They're go ahead and take it. I mean, Chivas, yeah. uh, Pachuca, and I think that's why we don't see Germany or France or you know or a Spain or Italy with uh, with those kids because they're not being released. But at the same time, I think that's that's good. Um, it's there's an article about Martin del Palacio uh, a couple years back and did a you know great kind of study. It does take a while to see a success from the U17 over to the senior side. I think we're finally seeing Gio because the mature age you know is 25, 26. It's gonna take you know, at least seven years before they reach their top performance, and we're seeing that barely now to the 2015. Who knows we're going to see that in the 2011. Yeah. Can we also say this is something potentially, like we're in a transitional period right now, I mean, with the current youth setup and with the amount of youth fatals that we have right now, that maybe a lot of these young players will get more chances abroad. Maybe mm -hmm. we'll see more, more, more young names going abroad than we have seen in the past. So it, it could be a good thing that we have going on. And I think... Uh, uh, well, and I think going back to another topic, I, you know, when we talk about, you know, the difficulties of uh, the youth system transitioning over to, you know, the senior system, I don't think that's a Mexico problem. I think that's a that's a problem for most senior squads. I I I, I think for for most national teams, you know, there's a there is a problem to see those youth players, you know, become important national team players when they're much older. I but I guess in the end though, I guess it's a nice thing that Mexico. I mean, I'd, I guess we, we would rather have a successful youth team than a youth team that doesn't have much talent. So I guess that's good. That's good in the end, you know. I think it's it's still a win-win. But uh, but yeah, no, I I, well, I, I, I you know I, I have to have agree there with you. Winning a U17 World Cup is is better than not winning a U17 World Cup. But I think we're we're putting way too much importance into what a U17 World Cup actually means. I I think Mexicans. Since 2005, are thinking winning a U17 World Cup is this great, huge accomplishment when it's a pretty okay accomplishment, because now they expect these players. They want to see these players in Liga MX the, the following weekend, yeah. and that's not that's now that's not the natural process of things. They still have to play in the U17 division. They still have to play in the U20 division, and then they still have to fight those top stars for a spot in the in the first division. So yeah. the amount of I don't think anybody is expecting, expecting them to, to make it over in the first team. One of the, one of the things, one of Johnny keeps saying, uh, you're done with your thought, Johnny? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Interrupt him. Okay. Oh, uh, okay. So <laughs> one, one of the things that I want to point out with, uh, with the U17 uh, events that have occurred, let's keep in mind the last 2013 uh, final was between Mexico and Nigeria. Nigeria beat Mexico. And from that generation, uh, Raul Gudinho and Omar Govea were spotted by FC Porto. Gudinho already has a contract with SC Porto. Govea is on the verge of getting one. Um, you know, I think these U17 teams attract, um, you know, get, catch the eye from the scouts because they see potential. But mm -hmm. sometimes Mexican teams are like, all right, you know, uh, uh, attraction from Europe is coming, so let me overprice the, the tag of the player. You know, I think they got to find sort of ways of, maybe a loan for a year, like they did with Gudinho and they're doing with Govea right now, and then sell them off. You know, because, for example, a, a, a good example is Fierro. Fierro should have gone to Europe, maybe have a loan, and then uh, let's see what happens, uh, play in a B team or, or some, somewhat of a, a, a deal. But I think this generation, if, if they're not going to have minutes in Europe, we might as well make them play in the B team of Porto or the B team of Atletico and get get minutes in Europe instead of just being on the bench in, in Mexico and playing in, in U20, U17 uh, competition. Yeah. Uh, we've seen the scouts, you know, and, and you see what that... 
Uh, you know, U20, with, with that third place in U20, we're seeing, you know, Diego Reyes. If you look at that U20 team that went on, I mean, in, 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 into what it is now, I mean, I think, I think it takes a while. And I think that's what people are trying to see. Well, we can never see that. How come we haven't had successes in U20 level, the level of maturity? Our, our players are too short at, or, and they don't develop. I mean, it's good, especially exactly what you just said, Naive, with you know making sure that these guys are being seen. And Tom's plain and plain and simple. These guys are playing. That's what we ha we want them to have. Yeah, yeah. They, they they need to play. It doesn't really matter where, to be honest. But they need to be. And I'm not saying like I think Johnny's completely right. It's not like next year they're all going to be in the league or MX. But you know every player develops at a different pace. So, but you, but you need that opportunity. And and honestly, from my point of view, after like doing quite a lot of studying this weekend on it, I just don't think there is. I mean, like, for example, last weekend, if you go Mexican goalkeepers all over the world, just have a guess how many under 30 years old started the game. This is anywhere in the world. Wow. Man. Anywhere in the world, Mexican goalkeepers under 30? Yeah. Take three or four. four. Five? Six? Five. Five. But when, you, when, you, when you're thinking, you know, I don't know. For me, that's like it's not, that's not that's not very good. It doesn't yeah. give you a lot of options. You but, know, but, but a keeper got, can last you to age of forty. I mean, yeah, but I mean that's why that's. But trust us, that two World Cups in them. Yeah, but, I mean, <laughs> but, <laughs> but that, that, that's why I said thirty and not twenty-five, like for the outfield players. But you know, you've got Antonio Rodriguez, who's twenty-three. Then you've got Oscar Jimenez, who's uh, Chiapas' goalkeeper. Then you've got. Jesse Gonzalez and Jonathan Orozco. Actually, I think there's only four. But I mean, I, I mean, is that? I don't know. Anyway, I'm moving off point, but you know, I'm just saying that I just don't. I think there's a blockage in the system in terms of getting yeah, all like, generations. like you think chances. about it. Think about Chucky Lozano's case or Eddie Gutierrez's yeah. case. I mean, these guys are are less than they're barely in their twenties, and they already have a kind of stable uh, professional uh, development going on in Pachuca. Because they got the shot, you know, they're they're actually good, and they got the shot, and, and they make the best out of the shot. But unfortunately, sometimes some of these players, for example, Amomia Gomez, you know, he's playing right now in second division, and and what's it called Cafeteleros, a random club in second division, and and he was meant to do great things, but you know, he got sort of messed up with promoters and. And all of these contracts that they get, because oh, they they yeah. won the World Cup, and I think that's one of the things in Mexico that have to get fixed as well. You know, yeah, not the, giving the, them the cake all all at once. You know, give them yeah. the cake little by little. <laughs> There's actually one of the kids from this generation of under 17s is called Kevin Ramirez, who's from Chivas, and he in the last I think 18 months has been to Manchester City twice for trials and to train with him, and I mean they really like him. I think the kids from from Nayarit. I'm not mistaken, but he's been over there twice, and from what I've heard, he's not actually even in the Mexico squad, and he's not even starting now for Chivas from the 17th because it all apparently just he went to the, his head a bit, and he, he kind of you know he was this big star because he'd been to Manchester and you know he'd uh, you know been training with the team, and and then all of a sudden he comes back, and I think you know you got to they got to keep really really grounded these players because you know even if they win the World Cup, they've they've achieved absolutely nothing in terms of you know. Being a professional, I mean, still a long way to go. So I guess, I mean, I guess that's kind of the silver lining that, uh, or I guess the negative silver lining that we're talking about here. <laughs> black lining. <laughs> the ne negative silver lining. <laughs> the black lining. The reverse, the reverse silver lining is that, yes, it's good that, you know, there's a lot of experience now, more so, you know, than before with a lot of these youth players. But we've talked about this in the past where a lot of these players coming into you know, their early 20s, late teens, you know, they have a U17 World Cup, you know, they, they a title. They have a U something. U they've done U like very well in the U20s, and then they get an extremely good contract, and then they don't want to leave Mexico because maybe they feel comfortable. Maybe they felt like they've accomplished so much already in their careers at a very young age. So I guess that's the negative silver lining if we're gonna <laughs> if we're gonna call it that way. <laughs> And it's not like, I think a lot of people just kind of make a big deal. Oh, Nigeria won it three times. You know, where's their success from the U-17? Brazil also won it three times. Uh, France has won it. You know, Mexico has won it twice. There hasn't been that many competitions. It started in so 19... So what does that tell you? That it absolutely does not matter whether you win U-17 World Cups or not. No, but it gives you better players. At the, at yeah, the senior, at the senior you... level, 
you can still be great or you can still be a Nigeria. No, it uh, gives you a better player pool. It, 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 well, I can give you, I, in that sense of an argument, I can give you Brazil one and three times and they won the World Cup ten years later twice. Yes, yes that's, that's what I'm saying. At the senior level, you can be a Brazil, you can be a Nigeria. Winning the U-17 World Cup actually has no influence on whether you're a Brazil or Nigeria. But it wasn't like there's no World Cup winners. You can go go back and forth. You can't just say there isn't and there is. I'm not going to say just because you won it. All I'm just saying, it hasn't been like Ghana and Nigeria have won every single time, and where are their players? Nigeria has won it three times. Brazil's won it three times. Mexico twice. Ghana twice. So it's not like... Like we can just say, oh, there's no correlation. We're seeing that, you know, three, four players from that 2005 are starters in in in, in Mexico and and have gone. So, uh, I think it does. There is a correlation of 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 star and what they do that and they, you know, the I think, they I think what what it shows this success at youth level is that teams are doing things right in the league remix. I mean, I think more than anything, that's the biggest take and that's a, a real positive. You know, because because there's enough competition at under 17 and only 20 level 20 level to produce really competitive national teams. Yeah. And I think that that says a lot about about what the what the Liga MX team has done. I mean, we we criticise them quite a lot, but I think on this level, and and there are some of them that still don't do very much. But um, in terms of you look at Pachuca and and Chivas especially, and you think yeah, the work that they've done is is absolutely outstanding in the last uh, in the last few years. You know, and in this U17, it's interesting because they left out a, a Real Madrid player, Paulo Medina, you know, who's uh, really talented and also possesses a lot of leadership. And he was left out of the team because he didn't go well with the rest of the teammates. And, and think about it, you know, they still beat Germany and Argentina without a player that plays in Real Madrid. There it is. You say we have it all over the place. If you look at the other thing, the third place teams that have, you know, in in the past for the U17, you see your Spain's, Argentina, Netherlands, uh, Germany's, you know, that, that are there. So it's not like it's just a tournament where you just have African countries and random, you know, Mexico there that's winning it. So we're looking at that. But enough for the question, U17. Question, no, question. question. Go ahead, Johnny. Go. Yeah. How many times has Italy won the U17 World Cup? None. How many times have they won the real World Cup? The real World Cup. The Four. real World Cup? Four. So tell, tell me, because they, they're not good at U17 level, they're not good at the senior No level. one is saying that, Johnny. How many times did they end it? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a good point. Even more, to my, even more to my point, Italian kids are not even qualifying to the U17 World Cup, yet Italy is still such a strong team. But it's not. At the Nobody's level. saying if you're going to win no a U17 level, There's, Johnny. I'm not I, saying that there is and there isn't. I think I'm I... I agree that we no over we, we over I think we might overhype the U17 tournament a little bit. I think we yeah. maybe have some unrealistic expectations. But that being yeah. said, it's not a bad thing when your national team at that age wins that tournament. Guys, that we gives overhype you more players anything. for the future. It's not we a overhype. bad thing. We don't overhype things. That's just who we are. Mexico <laughs> winning. Mexico winning. But I mean, the guy that was a skier, everybody was watching to see if he was in 17th Ooh. place. It doesn't that matter. Austrian prince. Yeah, the oh, Prince songwriter. It doesn't whatever. matter if the guy with the canoe that won the gold medal for the Olympics or the, you know the karate guys. It's like if Mexico is in any competition, we're not overhyping it. That's just who we are. Attached or the speedwalker. You know, las caminatas in the in the 80s, in the you know in 1988 and in 1982. I mean, that's just how it is. <laughs> that's, it's not overhyping anything. I mean, that's just how it is. The kids yeah. that with that the kids that 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 beat the basketball team that, that have no shoes those niños triquis I mean we're all over it. That was brilliant. <laughs> that's just that's just who we are as a nation. And of course, if U17 wins a World Cup and we see a Geo, I mean, look at that 2005. Don't tell me you didn't you know beating Brazil the way that we did with Carlos Vela and Geo. We're like wow, you know. And look at Geo and Carlos Vela. That's you know in in the way that they came out. And right. Hector Moreno. Hector Moreno. Hector Moreno. Moreno. Why? I know we don't go. I don't know. I know we don't go to the YouTube comments that much, but I, I love this comment right here. We are starving for success in Mexican soccer, but we're picking back. We're piggybacking on youth tournaments. We're not starving. I cannot, I cannot we're agree. Starving. We've I cannot done. Agree with was that, that was that 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 teams have done extremely well this year. We're not starving for success. I'm sorry. Copa America did what? Oh, Copa America with a backup team. Look at look we at the way that we are. It doesn't matter. We won that Conca Cup. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, the the world the 2014 World Cup did what? 
we did actually surprisingly well, considering the fact that we had a uh, we had a manager come in during uh, uh, late, in, sure. late into 2013. Sure. <laughs> yeah, but we're starving for. Remember, that remember, the, remember the expectations we had before the 2014. Johnny, World Cup. Johnny, we what the world coffee. team right now isn't starving? England. Germany's not starving for success. They could care less about the U17. We just Germany. Uh, Germany. They can, and, they, and Germany could care less about losing to Mexico in the U17 World Cup. They're the world champions. Uh, then I think that's where you're success. wrong. I think people look at that. I think a federation looks at the success and goes, okay. I think Germany getting beat and not making it in the second round, I think I think the, the the German federation is like, all right, what are we doing and, and how it is. And I think that, I think we just take it. You're saying that they, we overhype it, but that's just who we are and we're, and we're looking at it. Um, it doesn't translate just because we won. I, I, I'm 100% there. But there doesn't do any bad. And we, what we've seen is what we've given you those three options, John. I like it. I like the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Let's, uh, any last thoughts? Lots, lots of... Uh, uh, one, one quick thing about the U17 uh, World Cup. I think Mexico was the only national team from all the Americas, like North and South America, that finished in first place of their group. So, uh, uh, sh shout out to Mexico. And, uh, Let's a have a break for that one, too. But also, yeah, I think also uh, the United but States going United out States. in the group stage. I mean... <laughs> You look at what's happened over the last few, you know, with the Olympics and then, you know, the the Concacaf Cup and then going out the under seventeen and it's like, it seems like, you know, everything's going wrong for for them and everything's going right for for Mexico at the minute. No, and then one of the things, you know, if if El Tri wants to, you know, there's a lot of things that El Tri has to fix. We know that, and I think a good place to start is by building uh, good youth teams. I mean, Spain did it, Germany did it. Uh, you know, France is doing it quite French, well. French is it, unbelievable, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're building from youth teams. That, you know, for example, right now with France, I think Naib's cutting out a little bit more. You see Griezmann, these and, and building play. Yeah. Like Ray. No, I mean, I mean, I think it's quite old, but you can uh, see, you, you can know, see it all Jimenez, over. Jimenez, uh, you know, it, it helps in the long, and, and we'll see if it works out. Now you cut in and out, but I think but we got the players you mentioned are all very good. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we we heard some. I, Sorry, I, Dave, I, you were cutting in and out, so. Yeah, you're cutting in and now you're Hear mentioning me. French. You're cutting in and now you're mentioning French players, and all of a sudden you're talking about Raúl Jiménez and Gudín. So. <laughs> That's my favorite. Oh, <laughs> okay, okay. So I was talking about France and, and how uh, Griezmann and Pogba played youth World Cups as well, and now they're 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 showing their their you know their talent in the in the senior team. You know, it's a place to start. You know, Gudiño, Reyes also played youth tournaments, and now they're playing. Um, El Jimenez as well, and now in the senior team, you know. There it is. Definitely some conversation point, yeah. that's there. Yeah. All right, guys. To close out the the U17, what's happening uh, in the chat? I think people are like, all right, let's let's uh, let's stop talking about the U17. It's it's great to see Chile uh, against Mexico uh, coming up. Uh, El Anfitrión. Uh, the crowd's gonna be there. I'm sure it's either gonna be at the Nacional, the stadium. So interesting to see that we play again, Chile. Um, we played him in the Copa America against against that, but hopefully it goes in a different manner. We actually um, do get actually win and, and see where they go and see how 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 this squad kind of performs and what we're seeing. So definitely keep an eye out in what we do, guys. So we'll we'll throw it out and we'll go into you know Johnny's favorite you know topic, Liga MX. We did such a good spot on you know we were talking about Pumas last week and you know you know super leader and, and what was going on and then we saw the games against Juarez guys each a highlight for the weekend on what we saw Tom el el clásico tapatío which you were looking forward to got canceled and, and that's my highlight <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't have to watch Chivas. So <laughs> but well, we see that Cesar I know you got some crazy numbers that you my, always my, do my you're was, looking at it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no, we see that. Yeah. What yeah. do we need to watch last weekend? What can we look forward? Um, and especially what's going on with the Liga MX for those that oh, are. Oh, there is. There, not. there are a lot of surprising results. I think more so than the other week. I, if I were to have, if I were to predict the scores, uh, like last weekend, 
I would have been wrong for so many of them uh, from last weekend. I, I would have predicted that the Toluca would have beat Veracruz, but the Toluca ended up losing. I would have thought that Santos would have found another another you know win, but they ended up losing Cruz Azul. America lost. You had Dorados tying against Tigres. You had Pumas losing the Chiapas. It was a it was a weekend filled with a there's a lot of surprising results. That's for sure. I think the one that uh, stands out to me the most is I know the America Querétaro thing stands out a bit, but I think it was it was the Pumas and Chiapas yeah, game. Chiapas. Yeah, Chiapas. Golazos. Yeah, no, it, it was it was very very entertaining. Um, but I mean. In the end, though, I think um, I, I, Pumas are still fine. Anyways, and although technically, I looked this up, Chivas could still technically finish above Pumas if <laughs> everything is miraculous <laughs> and there are miraculous results, and it, it's not going to happen. <laughs> but it's just, it's just crazy to think that that could help. But that being said, I, I think Pumas don't really have much to worry about uh, at this point uh, in the season. So I, I don't think they'll really feel too hurt by that, but then again, they did allow their first goals uh, of the Apertura. It's tough. I mean, I'm, go ahead, I'm going to go uh, Monterrey. I think uh, I'm just waiting for Monterrey Who's just to that? burst in. Who's that? I mean, so. <laughs> That's somebody's cat. That's my cat. She wants to go outside. <laughs> DJ Cuddles is making a pair DJ Cuddles, yeah. yeah. Get a dog. <laughs> no, cats are better. <laughs> hey, Talking of dogs, Cholos um, oh. lost pretty badly there to, to Monterrey. Now, I, I don't know, we'll, t- we'll maybe t- touch on Cholos, but yeah, I just want to, Monterrey, I think, you know, you look at a team and you just go through it now and you're like, I just have to believe at any moment this Monterrey team has is, is just got so much potential. And I mean, a 3 1 win over Cholos, I thought they played quite well. But, you know, there's, there's just hints with when, like, Cardona, Pavon, and Funes Mori, when they get it together, it's like, you know, and then you've got, like, Daniel Mohamed on the bench, and you're like, if they can if they can actually make the playoffs, I mean, I'd, 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 I'd put a bit of money on them, me. I really would. I mean, uh, I think I've said for quite a while now, Tigres and America, I think, are the best teams in the league. Um, but I think Monterrey, I'd put them just behind and then with, with Toluca, so... I mean, those are the teams I'm personally looking at. I've been really surprised by Puebla. Every time I see them, I'm like, I can't quite believe that they're, that they're still winning. Because just, they're just one of those teams that you expect to kind of, you know, at this stage of the season, now to start dropping down, you know what I mean? And, and they just haven't done. And the same with Veracruz. I watched them play here in uh, Guadalajara against, uh, who is it, against Chivas or... I've been waiting for Veracruz to crash and burn since about week eight of last season. Yeah. But I saw them like two weeks ago, and they were like they were awful. I mean, they looked like they really weren't bothered about playing, like they weren't playing for the manager. And then all of a sudden, they pick up a couple of wins. It's it's weird. And then it's, it's, it's the strikers from Veracruz, you know. But they're lucky that they're doing. They don't even know who who their starting goalkeeper should be in Veracruz right now. Yeah, it's really strange. And Belito <laughs> Hernandez, that was like <laughs> that was done. I'm Maybe sure you guys done. Know, that was the worst. That was like the worst goalkeeper performance. I, he, I, 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 to his to his like he did flip a little up. bit. It looked like he tried to do some kind of, of like juke and grab it and go, but at the minute he did that, he he slipped and kind of just <laughs> failed from there. At least the fact that he slipped gave him, but but what a bad way to show off because he could have just grabbed it with his hands. All of a sudden, he faked it, tried going forward. He flipped out, came back. I was like, gosh, man. Yeah. Going back to Monterrey, they have a really good manager that knows how to win championships. That's right. It's right. It's right. He knows how to, you know, not just he win championships. Win. Yeah. He, he knows Liguilla. When Liguilla comes and you have to get an away result and you take it back home, he, he does. He's really good at it. He's really good at kind of managing games. And that now that he, Monterrey's got a really big home field advantage, they're motivated about playing in a brand new stadium. The, the fans are motivating about going to a brand new stadium. They've had the brand new stadium for like two months. What? And look at the results they're starting to pick up. Well, to be honest, I mean, a couple of those home results at first were pretty dismal. I think yeah. it wasn't until recently that they started to do a little bit better at home. But I mean, it's I mean, they, I mean the playoffs are had, all about finding momentum at the right time, and Monterrey are definitely yeah, definitely hitting it right now. They've had the stadium for what two months, and they've had the coach for three and a half months. So things are starting to to pick up for for me. Monterrey. For me, uh, Matias Vidagrosi. I was like, where did this guy come out finally for uh, for Chiapas? I just thought he had an amazing game and just and what, potential. And what's going on with Matosas? 
Matías. So what's so in the Matosas? Don't worry, Matosas. The Mat Matosas will, will keep going. We'll, we'll keep going with Matosas. It's Atlas. It's Atlas. It's Atlas. What do you expect him to do? Give him in some time. In the conversation, in the conversation, uh, uh, Busetich's uh, Gallos Blancos hasn't been brought up, and you know they were in the final last last season. In, in the game on Azteca, you know, he basically, Bucetich's uh, tactics were, were quite excellent, you know, with uh, putting the midfielders and the defense kind of blocking Aguilar from attacking that much in the in the right flank. Um, you know, I think uh, Villas is having a great season with the goals. You know, this is a leading goal scorer, and it was evident in that game. You know, just had basically like two two shots on goal and, and one yeah, I think. What well, I think for Caretro. Which was the win. Um, so it's a team to look as well. You know, Ayos Blanco himself after the game was quite interesting. Yeah, no, I think I think Caretro. Uh, what I think Naib was saying about Vucetic is like Mohamed. They both want. If they're in that Liguilla, then it's like nobody's going to want to face him. But the other thing with Caretro, I think Volpe is one of the. Very best goalkeepers in the league, and uh, guys, you, you, you guys are you guys are all forgetting. Leon's gonna win one championship this in the next. If they can win a game, we man. don't know. Yeah, don't worry about game. it. Don't worry. I'm telling you right now. If they're four of the past few games. Copa MX or the Champions you know, League. Don't I, worry. I can, actually, I can actually see Leon winning the Copa MX because they they'll close out at home. The Liga and Liga MX they they have to do away games and they kind of suck on the road. Yeah, I can see him winning the first game four nothing and losing the second game six nothing yeah. <laughs> with eight players. Yeah, the, the, you'll see. Yeah. You're gonna be laughing at me now, but one of, there's gonna be a trophy. Panza this. I don't know which one it is. The Weasel Damas hasn't given me the actual. <laughs> I don't know which one it is. Interesting stuff, especially when we're at the with the, at the season and and we're getting closer to see what the top eight to make it in there. But um, one thing that I did notice is you know just. I know a lot of people talk about the, the La Liga, and for me is the fact that we're seeing golazos after golazos every weekend, just like amazing plays, and and in what's happening. At what point can we say that, that the league has really taken a step uh, towards being you know top five, top you know four, three in the world? I've seen, and and not because I'm I'm spazzing on that that it's Mexico, but the competition, the level, and and especially the goals week after week just these golazos that I don't remember seeing, maybe because I didn't watch as many games, but I don't remember seeing that um, in at, at least in a world stage. I don't know. Am I crazy for thinking this? Silence. I, th I think Silence. No, there's a lot of good players. I mean, yeah. there really is. I mean, you look at a team like uh, Tigres, and I think I think it was you, Naive. I think once you said a few months ago, you said this Tigres team could compete in La Liga. Um, and, you know, obviously we're not talking about... <laughs> Battling for the title with Real Madrid and Barcelona, but you know, in terms of competing, you know, maybe nearer the bottom. But you know, I think it, I think this Tigres team can. I think that uh, Monterrey could as well, and America yeah, could. Okay. Um, and, and I think the others, maybe you could put Toluca in there, maybe. But you know, I think that's the standard of the league. And I think you look at a player like Gignac, and you think, well, mm -hmm. you know, and Pavon, and you know, there's a lot of quality there, no doubt. But but I mean. Yeah, <laughs> but there's a long way to go. Still, you know, there's still a long way to go to get it to get it even better. And um, you know, obviously, there's a there's a big debate on how to do that. But yeah, no, it's a it's a, it's definitely a top league. No, I agree as well. I think I think it's definitely top league. Uh, I think uh, uh, we have a lot of those uh, very talented attackers. I think we need a little little bit more of a uh, talented players in the defense uh, right now. Maybe maybe that's why. Maybe all the big names that we keep getting tend to be. Uh, more of attacking players. Perhaps that's why we're seeing more golazos. Maybe there aren't nearly as many golazos, or maybe there are, but uh, I mean, I, I feel like that's just the focus when I'm bringing in those those big names. Um, but yeah, I don't know, those are my, my this, two cents. This is, it's, uh, we're reaping the benefits of shunning the, the little kids. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, you can argue that, you can argue that. I think, I, I, I think there's a balance there that needs to be struck, and I think it's you need these foreigners because you need you need the young Mexican players to be playing against really good opposition. I mean, it yeah, helps. Forever argument. But um, but yeah, I mean, I tell you what, another thing that's going to be really interesting in terms of the development of the league will be um, next 
February when it's the CONCACAF Champions League. I mean, I'm I'm actually I'm genuinely really excited about the yeah. about the matchups because it's like you've got some MLS can't complain. They've got the biggest and best teams representing them, and and the Liga MX can't complain either because they've got the biggest and best teams um, right yeah. now. So right. it's going to be fascinating four against four. We got we got, have, all, we got all our faith in Querétaro and Santos. <laughs> I, I have I, I think Querétaro are kind of like they're like Monterrey light. Like I think they're like a sleeping giant, not in the same level. I feel like they could potentially step it up at the end. I think they have talent on the squad, and obviously Vucetich, you know, he's um, the stuff that he could do on game days is a, is pretty impressive. So I, I I don't know. I, I think I think I, I think Querétaro are better than what than their current standing right now. That's all. I'm when say. is when is it when is the the when is, does does it start? Feb February March. Oh. It's so long. It starts late February, but I mean, but I mean, it's going to be fascinating because you've got four against four, and you've got the for me the best two teams in Liga MX, American Tigres, player for player, and the yeah. best two teams in MLS, the ones that have made headlines, the one that the kind of league pushes forward as the example of what MLS can achieve. Which I is think it'd be exciting if, if if Galaxy, you know, we see a Geo, you know, play against America. I think that's what we're looking for. We see, but Johnny yeah. had a tweet. Johnny, yeah. what did you tweet out when the 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 four, you know, that the schedule came out? Oh, just a picture of Liam Nelson saying, "Good luck." Liam <laughs> <laughs> Nelson. But it's good, you know. Uh, no, here's a, here's a theory with the Geo Galaxy America scenario. The MLS season is about to end pretty soon. They're about to start their playoffs. Mm -hmm. You know, Geo can come on on a short loan to America, play the World Cup. <laughs> <of course. laughs> I, th I thought yeah, we've I already turned down those rumors. I thought it was, it's been a while since uh, that's not going to actually happen. Yeah, no. We we want to start those rumors up again. <laughs> but in in the way that we see that uh, Cesar uh, with the MLS, you know, looking at that, I mean, the sides. Mm -hmm. Do you see it as an all, you know, semifinal with all Mexican teams again? Uh, yeah. I mean, I I, I think <laughs> I think I think maybe one MLS team might sneak through. But uh, and interesting enough. Costa Rica, which had you know four teams last time, has none. Yeah. You know the Heredianos, the Saprisas, the the Alajuelenses. That's because last season we had Cruz Azul representing the game. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> we also had Matosas in America. Remember that. Move on. What what else do we have? Europeans. Hey. Naive is back. Naive. Hopefully, Naive, Naive had, to, had to step away and get his. Uh, as far as uh, Champions League, and we're, and we're looking at, uh, uh, I'm sorry, not Champions League, the Liga MX going forward, uh, what to look forward to this weekend in, uh, in all of Liga MX, Querétaro, Monterrey, Tijuana, Pumas. Uh, on Halloween, Cruz Azul, Veracruz, Tigres, Santos, León, Atlas, Morelia, Dorados, Chiapas, Puebla. Uh, November 1st, Toluca, America, in Guadalajara, Pachuca. Tom, when did they reschedule the, the Tapatio, the Clásico Tapatio? It's uh, 11th of November, so a few days before uh, before Mexico plays El Salvador. Okay. So. And, then, and that we will see. What, uh, what are some games that we're looking forward to the, for, for this weekend, especially that's starting to pull away from the top, but obviously uh, we'll see where Pumas re rebounds from it, but what do you guys see? I, I think I think that for, that for some teams this weekend is kind of Almost a last chance now. I'm mm -hmm. thinking, you know, Cruz Azul. If they don't win this weekend, then you think that's all over. I think you can, you know, the likes of Atlas, Morelia, Pachuca, uh, Chivas, and Querétaro are really got to be winning. I mean, this is the yeah. time now that, you know. So, so I'm, I'm looking to those teams, especially Chivas, and because, you know, Almeida's come in. It's been pretty positive, but you know, is it how good is it going to be? What can they do? And I think Pachuca is a really good test, and it'll be. Uh, I think it'll be a really good game. Both teams are absolutely desperate to win. Both on 17 points with a game in hand. So if they can move up to 20, then you know the, the, they'll feel confident that they can make the playoffs. But with a loss, then all of a sudden Chivas' season is like just falls into into nothingness really, unless they can do something on Wednesday in the cup against uh, Toluca. Mm -hmm. Santos, I just, I mean, I would have thought Santos is rebounding on. In, in, you can, know, you, can you hear me right now? Right now, yeah. can I enter the the Thanks yeah, go ahead. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, real quick. Uh, uh, hopefully, it doesn't. I'm sorry to the audience for you know the 
the, the situation right now, the technical. The Tom was saying about Chivas, I think uh, it will be important with the with the forwards, uh, not counting too much on Maro Bravo and Omar. Maybe another player comes out like Marco Fabian. Um, and also with America, Toluca, that will be interesting. I think that's already a game that smells like Guilla, basically. Yeah, I agree with that. I think, I think uh, the Toluca game, uh, you know, those, those Sunday morning games in Toluca, I think that Toluca America game definitely stands out to me uh, for the one to watch. Uh, like Naive said, it could be, yeah, it looks like a Ligia game already. Yeah, yeah. I, think, I think Cardoso needs something as well. Cardoso's been there now for, for a while. I think he's re reached quite a lot of semifinals, and, you know, I'm sure the, the, the owners of Toluca are now going right. You know, we backed you again in the transfer market this the past window, like, Let's win this thing now because we've been there or thereabouts for so long. No. Yeah, the the Toluca America game. That's probably the game I'll be watching, especially oh. since I just really since I, yeah <laughs> since I don't have a NFL team to watch anymore because I divorced oh, the San Diego Chargers. Oh no! Yeah. Hey, did you hear about Arizona losing? Like it's like a historic loss. It's in the score. No, the I don't score? know. I I haven't seen the score. What's the score? 50-20. No. I know, they seem to get me. Anyway, go on, move on. What's this NFL you guys speak of? <laughs> I, thought we only talking about one, I thought we were only talking about one football thing tonight. You well, know what? Anyway. I, I'm going to confess something. I actually had these tickets to go to the Monday Night Football. It's like literally like right around here. Uh, and I chose a Mexican soccer team. I didn't want to let you guys down. <laughs> now, uh, I, now I've, I've, uh, I, I think your, uh, silence, your silence has spoken that you're not talking about Cholos in the playoff fight. Mathematically, they still have a chance. Wait, what? Cholos have a chance? <laughs> With the conversation, but okay. Tell me what's going on, at Cholos. Anyways, what's the uh, what's the news? Tell us the, the news. Tell us the, news. The, the new coach. The, the news is the Cholos still have a chance at the playoffs. They can, they can finish on 22 <laughs> points. Every, who doesn't have a chance, Dorados? That's it. Maybe. Johnny, how you feeling? Uh, how, how you feeling going up against uh, Pumas when they when they visit? Should be an easy win right there, right? Yeah, like five yeah. nothing, Cholos or something. Yeah, you know we're we're hoping Pumas struggles with that you know sea level air that they're not used to. So <laughs> sea level air. <laughs> so ho hopefully that that works out in in Cholos' advantage. And yeah, we can we still make a push for the playoffs. The U the Cholos U twenty is gonna be in the playoffs, so you know. Weren't you just criticizing Mexico's U17? But the Cholos U20 has the Olympic goalkeeper. <laughs> Keep it on the hood. <laughs> so, Cholos, got it. Make it to the playoffs. Yeah. Guys, it's already uh, uh, 8 o'clock here on the, on the West uh, Pacific Zone. Yeah, 8 o'clock time. But I want to thank everybody on the chat that's on and kept talking all about uh, the U17s. Carlos Myers, Omar Santos, Sabad Lopez... M M Moda F <laughs> Moda Foca <laughs> Moda Foca uh, I gotta definitely pre-read all those, but we have fun times here at the Mexican Talker Show. Um, and what we were looking at, uh, I will be uh, kind of, you know, Cesar is going to be brought up like he always says to the first team for the next two weeks. Ooh, I'm like Ochoa. Um, I'm taking uh, a little vacation going uh, uh, that. Especially after the summer, traveling a lot and working, but I'll be uh, I'll be not hosting it on Monday for the next two Mondays. I'll try to see if I can join in somewhere from the beach, maybe for a little while, um, and uh, and maybe show you guys where I'm at. But uh, it should be it should be fun. So Cesar, uh, I leave we, you the Mexican soccer. We show have a request. We have a request for a two-hour show. A two-hour oh show. Yeah. No. 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 They got nothing better to do. <laughs> yeah, we should, we, we've done two-hour shows before. Remember when we uh, we do the uh, the games? The, the games uh, with, the, with, the with the thirty seconds of like awkward silence. We're like, yeah. <laughs> no, that wasn't that bad. Run. We had like a thousand viewers, a thousand listeners, and like yeah, people were no. watching in there. But I, I but, don't know about two-hour show, but maybe cut cut it down to half hours and maybe daily. <laughs> daily half hour. I think we'll get there. We'll get there. Yeah. This is half hour. That's our goal. That's our goal. Right. So really, really quickly, really quickly, Carlos Vela scored two goals. Chicharito scored a goal. Moreno and Moreno <laughs> both uh, started in PSV's win. Rafa Marquez is struggling. Jimenez was terrible in the Benfica game. And, uh, was the goal of Benfica terrible? Yeah, actually, that's true. Actually, actually, the defense was pretty terrible. 
Uh, Layun got the start. Tecatito was subbed in. Hector Herrera still struggling to find minutes with Porto. Jonathan Dos Santos is starting to look a little bit better for Villarreal, and Giovanni Dos Santos got an assist in the loss to the Galaxy. Or the loss to the Sporting Kansas City. Sporting Kansas City, right? Yeah. That's all I need to know. What's going on with those playoffs? Starting on Wednesday. Uh, I'm guessing we only want to talk about... uh, Giovanni Dos Santos. Yeah, well, yeah. The playoffs. only thing that matters, uh, they go against Seattle, right? I saw. Yeah, yeah we also, there's another Mexican in Seattle, Gonzalo Pineda. So uh, so we should be, all right, there we go. That's, uh, that's, that's, that's a match to watch. Is it just one el- elimination, correct? Yeah, just one. And then they go up against, I should know this, but uh, they go up against like the first or either second place team. And how, uh, <laughs> as, as our MLS now. Know. There's <laughs> other paisanos, too. There's other paisanos, uh, Victor Ulloa and FC yeah. Dallas. Miguel Aguilar in DC United as well. Uh, Jesse Jesse Gonzalez. He's yeah. Jesse Gonzalez. Uh, Dallas. Dallas. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like those guys, but I don't like them anymore because they beat earthquakes recently. So that's why I didn't mention them. <laughs> Cesar, Cesar. Uh, as far as LA Galaxy and Seattle Sounders, LA Galaxy. I mean, that's a, they should be able to beat them, or how is that? I mean, I think so- Sounders are going to be home, so it's going to be it's be very very difficult. If I remember correctly, Sounders are going to be home in the, in the match, and it's it's a very very intimidating atmosphere where they have like fifty thousand, sixty thousand plus people. Yeah, uh, yeah it's, a, it's a pretty intense. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's going to be very tough for them up there. Mm, awesome. All right. Well, there we go. There's a chance to watch the MLS for those of you that don't watch it. Joanny Los Santos, Gonzalo. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna... I'll be watching. I, I, I'll, I'll be honest. You know, Gio's in there. The last time I watched, I think MLS playoffs was back when, with, uh, with Guatemoc Blanco and then in, in, in the Chicago Fire. So. <laughs> you, you gotta stop calling it the the MLS. Oh my gosh, people, oh, people get mad. Called... People get absolutely MLS. Mad. <laughs> it is called MLS for my MLS. For friends at SOM and soccer net and marketing and and MLS. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, we started to, we started talking about MLS and our ratings started to go down. We literally lost viewers. <laughs> <laughs> it was maybe because I said goodbye. But all right, guys, Tom, Naive, Johnny, and Cesar, I will be uh, I'll be seeing you guys a little later. Uh, I'll be off for two weeks, but we'll definitely keep in contact. All of you guys that are on the show, please follow us on Facebook. And uh, you'll be seeing a couple of uh, of tweets. Uh, we're looking to, for for a new logo. And then also, if you missed uh, a uh, Cesar, do we still have our, our still looking for our social media person? Yeah, that's right. We've gotten uh, we've gotten some responses already. So uh, if you're looking to join the Mexican Soccer Show, if you're looking to join our team, if you're looking to do some work with us, if you're looking to hang out with us, uh, be sure to go on our Twitter page. There's a link. Uh, where you can uh, gives you all the information. Uh, we're looking for someone to be basically our social media intern and help mm-hmm. us with the the Mexican soccer show as well. So uh, we'll post it probably we'll post it probably tomorrow. And Johnny, whatever uh, you, Johnny, whatever you're about to say, don't say it. <laughs> Sounds like Afro, Afro Sanders got better things to do. <laughs> it could be Afro right, Sanders. <laughs> but yeah, so, yeah. Be sure to, be sure to go on the Twitter page and. Uh, I'll probably post it again tomorrow, and it'll give you all the information that you need. And it, uh, the deadline to apply is uh, next Wednesday, so not a awesome. uh, yeah, so not this upcoming Wednesday, but next next Wednesday. Great, great, great. Naib, first weeks in uh, in 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 the LFA? Yeah, yeah, first weeks. Um, I mean, I, I don't have a cool background for the moment, uh, so, oh, I mean, uh, <laughs> so I mean, so uh, I mean, I'll just start putting up newspapers and front covers of newspapers behind me go. so that would be a, a cool uh, background but that, that's through the through the weeks uh, it's been exciting the first days um, and hopefully I can go to, to other stadiums Johnny, yeah, my hood, Coyoacan. There it is, Johnny in his shirt. All right, guys, it's time for us to say goodbye. Thank you all, for, uh, all of you that are on the chat and all of you are on Twitter. Follow us on Monday Night Football. Cesar will be hosting the show next week. Uh, we have lots and lots to talk about, especially with the Liga MX and what's happening. The drama is coming before the Liga starts. Guys, this is all for the Ni- Mexican Soccer Show. I'm Wiso, and we'll talk to you guys next Monday Night Football edition of the Mexican Soccer Show. Adios.